Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event, um, webinar, webcast, whatever you want to call us. Um, we're online and we're online every week. Um, where we cover anything that may be of interest to libraries, any library related topics. The show is free and open to anyone to watch, um, as are our recordings on our website. Um, we do the live show every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're not able to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always go to our website and all the recordings for all of our previous shows are available there along with any PowerPoint presentations that might have been included or any kind of presentations, handouts, um, links to websites and whatnot is all collected um, so you can always watch it at your leisure. Um, we do a mixture of things, presentations, interviews, um, book reviews, mini training sessions. Um, as I said, library related, we are happy to have it on the show. And we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do sessions and we have um, guest speakers sometime and sometimes and this week we have a mixture <laughs> of that. Um, Lisa Kelly is our, um, what is your title here? Uh, Information Services Director. She's here from the Library Commission and um, Vicki Wood is Youth Services Supervisor at Lincoln City Libraries and they're going to talk about um, problems leading book groups or issues. You know, <laughs> what if you don't have any sort of, you know, in, you know, something preset to do a book group? How do you kind of come up with it? Yep. And apply, do it yourself. That's it. All right. All right. So I will hand over to you guys and you can take so, it away. Um, I think it's important for Vicki and I to talk about our book club backgrounds mm -hmm. and what we do and how we've booked with them for and what duration of time and talk about the kind of book group that we're really covering today. There are many kinds of book groups. But we're going to be addressing um, a particular kind of book group, and we hope that you can make that fit your needs. Additionally, Vicki has youth leadership for youth book, group, book club discussions. So if that is something that you have an interest in, Vicki can address those things. So do interact with us if you have particular questions about adult versus youth book groups. So Vicki and I are in a book club together and have been so for four Four or so oh, years yeah, that sounds good. and I have a book group that meets in my house and has done so for 15 years and we started with the one book one Lincoln that was our impetus so um, we can date ourselves back to that and it's a co-ed book group we have a couple of men these men are writers one has written a book that we discussed in our group mm -hmm. um, and it's mostly people who live in my building and librarians who join us to add good color to our conversations. And Vicki, what about you? What about your book clubs? Well, I've been in a variety of book clubs over the years. I currently am in three. It sort of sounds like an addict or something, but <laughs> <laughs> I have the, the very different groups. Um, and um, part of my job at Lincoln City Libraries was training uh, book group leaders for um, to be, to be leaders, and I did that probably for about 15 years, and that was a really rewarding and wonderful experience, and I learned a lot, and I think that a lot of the, the tips and um, ideas we have for leading book groups with children and teens translate into adult book groups, too. Good. So. Okay. Um, I also want to clarify that this presentation today is purely about leading the discussion. Now, a while back, Vicki and I did one about how to lead a book group, but today we're going to talk really about the discussion. Um, and it was precipitated by comments I've received from people. I've been asked to lead a book group. Do you have any questions? Here's the book. Um, and if there aren't any questions, there's sometimes a real uncertainty about what, how do I do it? What do I do? Or I've also received comments from librarians who have borrowed books from our book club kids. This was a terrible book. Nobody finished it. Mm -hmm. Nobody enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So I'd really like to address those comments that we've recently been receiving to say, first of all, I don't think that's a bad thing. <laughs> um, you're not all going to walk away from a book club discussion with, a, with a, maybe a warm glow about you. Our last book club discussion was really kind of tough. Mm -hmm. Vicki was one of the few who championed it, and even the person <laughs> who picked it, you know, I'm not sure was crazy about it, but it was a success. So Doesn't I, it sometimes make it more interesting if you have conflicting opinions? Yes. I mean, everyone said, oh, it was awesome, and I loved it. Right. Well, that's made a pretty boring discussion right. about right. how everything was perfect yeah. and great in this book. And, yeah. and I do have a comment. It's one thing just to gush and gush and gush together about something, but what do we learn right. about that? So the conflict is what 
you're trying to navigate. And I don't mean to say conflict, I just mean to say um, varying opinions, mm -hmm. and they might not be conflict. So um, this also I wanted to qualify is maybe more prone to be helpful to those who are reading the same book title. Mm -hmm eight people reading the same book because there are book groups where sometimes you're all reading a different book. And so if that's your book group, we may not be addressing those issues entirely because that's really where you go around the room and give a little book review. Mm -hmm. So today's discussion will be more tailored to those book clubs who are all reading the same title. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So. Vicki and I have some expectations that may or may not fit your book club, um, but we have some things that we think that are important. If you belong to a book group, you've already said, I'm going to read stuff I don't like. I'm going to be forced to read a book that's not in my favorite list. I normally read this, this, this. Vicki, you normally read memoirs. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of fiction, right. with salted with a little nonfiction now and then. Right. So if you're in a book group, <laughs> this is just an agreement that you need to make with your co-readers. You want to expand upon that? Victoria? Yeah, I think that's really important. And I think some people come into book groups not really understanding that concept. Um, and and I, I was actually in a book group for a long time where people kind of opted in and out like, oh, I didn't really want to read that book. and you know, we took turns choosing it, and it really is kind of, um, it's kind of not in the spirit of things to be that way, and, you know, everybody can choose how their book group works, but if you, mm -hmm. I think if you want your book group to be successful, you sort of have to start at that premise that, that you can, that your leisure reading is one thing, and your book group reading is different, mm -hmm. and that if you're going to be an active and committed part of a book group, which is what, to me, makes it really successful, mm -hmm. you have to buy in and read books that you normally wouldn't choose for yourself. And here's another thing that I think is really important, and you can, I'll say something and you okay. keep commenting here. Um, I think it's really important that when you come to the book club that you finish the book mm -hmm. <laughs> and that you've read it or are going to fake it really well. Only once have I never not finished a book and I was going to fake it, but I, I was discovered. <laughs> you were, so, you were um, found out. and another person that's on our staff said, oh, we shame those people who haven't finished <laughs> the book. And for some book clubs, that's completely acceptable. I just want to say there's many varieties on the spectrum of book clubs. Um, Vicki and I certainly have our opinions and you can have yours, but uh, I would say that's really important. What, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, it goes back to the first thing we were talking about, which is commitment. There's a commitment to your book group. There's a commitment to the other people um, in your group and coming to a discussion unprepared or having not finished is just kind of, it, it's, I don't know, I guess it's just like any relationship where you have kind of baseline expectations and when they aren't met then things just don't go so well so um you know and, and for instance in our group <clears throat> we meet every other month and so the expectation that you could finish a book in a month even with all your other reading that you're doing for whatever is is pretty realistic mm -hmm. i mean unless the book is enormously long but um but i just think that that's just it's, it's sort of a contract and sort of a commitment you have to the other people in your group yes so if you're leading a one-time book group, these rules and things we're talking about may not apply. I think, again, we're talking about a long-term continuing to meet at regular interval book group. Mm -hmm. So if you're just leading a one-time discussion, hopefully some of these things will translate uh, as well. Um, I think we all read a book differently. So when we come to a discussion... Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> Forgive me. I haven't. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, we all read a book differently. Then, so Vicki and I are going to read a book. We're going to read the same book, but we're going to have a very different experience. And you had a great story to tell about that that yeah. really brings that home. Yeah, this is a, this is a great story. Um, when we when we first started um, One Book, One Link, and I was a discussion leader, and I still continue to do that, and we had a downtown book discussion on the book Plain Song, and there were about 12 or 15 business people there, a good mix of men and women, 
And um, when we got to talking about the book, there were there were a lot of differences of differences of opinion. But one of the women said, you know, I think this book is about how horrible it is to live in a small town. You know, there's no support, there's no mental health things. Everyone knows your business. <laughs> it's just it's just a horrible thing. And then this this man chimed in and he said, well, I think this book is really about how supportive and wonderful small towns are. And, <laughs> and how, you know, everybody looks out for each other. And, and, you know, and then I think that was my first realization in all my years of being a librarian and a book discussion leader, um, that really people bring so much of their own uh, emotional things to to the to our book. Mm -hmm. And you cannot, um, you cannot know what that's going to be. I always thought people were all reading the same book. And then I realized, no, right. we're really mm -hmm. not. And so, uh, so that that's a great thing to keep in mind when you're in a book group because you can be really baffled by people's reactions to books sometimes, and that yeah. kind of explains where those some of those things come from. When we read the book Dewey, the library cat, oh right, book for my book club, my own personal cat was in the last month of his life, right. and I was just in anguish. Right, but nobody else was going through that at the right. time, so. Well, that's what I brought to that book at that time. It was timing. Exactly. It's timing because we've all had an experience where we've tried to read a book and it just doesn't resonate with us. And then we pick it up four years right. later and say, oh, my God, what a great book. You know, It's like eating pumpkin pie in spring yeah. or watermelon <laughs> for Christmas. It's just wrong. Exactly. Um, I also want to talk about the chemistry of a book group can certainly affect a discussion. So while we're going to give you tips and tricks, the chemistry of the people involved is um, ever-changing. It's delicate. It is, and I, I don't. I can't really stress that enough. But in a movie, you can tell if actors have chemistry or if they don't. Right. And the same is true for a group of people who are sitting around a table. Or chemistry can really help, or it can really stink things up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, as the discussion leader, need to keep that in mind as well. And I think we we had some issues with this in some of our with our book groups with the, with children too, where. We had, and there were parent-child groups where we had a parent that kind of dominated or a child that kind of dominated or someone who would never talk. And, um, and we sort of talked about um, tips to, um, as a discussion leader, to kind of mediate that problem. In other words, calling directly on the quiet child, asking him or her a direct question and saying things to the parent like, um, well, let's let's see what other people have to say about this. Or it's obvious that you have a strong opinion, but maybe others feel differently. And um, so we worked a lot on that in our book discussion hmm. um, training. Um, before we go into our tips and tricks, I want to remind you on the Library Commission webpage, we have a book club kit page. We have over 800 titles of multiple copies of books that you can borrow from us. Um, we link to other libraries who generously will share their um, book clubs with us. And when you search our site, if we don't have it, the other libraries that do will appear with their contact information. So this is more than just searching our library. It's various libraries. This is a really easy way to get a hold of multiple copies of books. If that's a problem for your group, this makes it easy. One more thing, there are generic questions here. Um, generic questions for fiction, generic questions for nonfiction. And if you were to look at them and you were actually going to use them, I think you would give yourself away pretty quickly as someone who hadn't read the book if mm -hmm. you were a leader. But these are here to help and they may augment some things that you want to discuss. So for fiction and nonfiction, you've got some options here. And I can't go back. Okay. Um, so I'll point those out to you. But then I also want to point out that um, our session today, book, um, book group discussions, tips and tricks, this is what we're going to go through today. So you don't need to write these down. This is on our web page. So we're going to go through these. And Vicki and I both came up with this list. And so um, we'll just start off with number one. And I don't know that this is just common sense or we need to stress the obvious, but if you are asked to be a book club leader, really, the, the hard work falls on the leader, I think. So know that going in. I liken it to the woman, the man, the person who hosts Thanksgiving. You're going to have to come up with the recipes. You're going to have to shop. You're going to make the food, and they're going to eat it up in about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. The preparation time versus the time that you're eating, 
think of that in terms of your book club. You really are doing a lot of the prep work. You're reading the book. You're thinking about it. You're reading it differently. So think about it that way if you're asked to be a book discussion leader. And so in my book club, Vicki is the only other person who will sub for me for being the book <laughs> club leader. The others do not want to do it, and they say so. So that is my responsibility, and I've learned a lot thinking about these tips and tricks today. What else do you want to say about that? Vicky? Well, I was in a book group where we sort of traded off. Um, mm -hmm. Whoever chose the book then led the book discussion, and they were responsible for doing the background research and coming up with discussion questions. And um, it was pretty spotty because people vary so much in that. Like you said, mm -hmm. some people really don't like to do it. So I think if you have somebody who likes to lead and is comfortable in that role, you should let them do it and not <laughs> be so democratic and say, no, everybody has to do it. Um, just because it doesn't always work so well. Um, and so, so that's, you know, I think that, that people have different talents for that and they have different, um, different ways that they do it. So I, I would say if you have a few people in your group who are natural book leaders or have some training in it or are more interested in it, to go ahead and let them go for it. And I think, let me distinguish, it's different from choosing the book. Right. I, I think it's important my opinion to make everybody take turns picking the book but leading the book is a different thing entirely and it might be unfair to expect the person who picked the book to lead, right. to lead the book um while you're reading the book and i know when i i've been doing this for a while i'll keep post-it notes handy or a notepad handy um if you're reading electronically if you're reading if you're listening any way that you can note particular passages descriptions, things that really stick out to you, and take notes on that. Um, that's one way to help prompt the questions or the comments that you want your other readers to, to discuss. Do you do that also? Yeah, I definitely read my book group books differently. I mean, I, t I tend to look for things that I think are discussion worthy. I also tend to write down questions and things I didn't understand or I thought were mm -hmm. unclear and things like that. So. Yeah, I definitely read my book group book with a pen, with a uh -huh. pen in hand. It does maybe feel like your English class from college, perhaps, and maybe it might take the joy out of it. Sometimes I'll read a book twice right. for a book club. Yeah, read listen it. to it and read it. That'll yeah. also give you a very different perspective. So remember, the preparation time for you as the leader is going to be longer, right. and if that's not your cup of tea, um, then say no. <laughs> Right. Um, so then look at, I would say, then look at your notes when you have finished the book. And really, I do in a format write questions down in with number one, number two, number three. I used to feel that that was a bit of a prop, and I didn't like to do mm -hmm. that. I loved if it was just a little more organic. Right. But sometimes that's not really reliable, and it can flop. Right. Do you prepare questions? Yes, I do. And... And also, not just questions, but um, sometimes I'll just pick out things that are more like um, more like observations or comments or even a passage sometimes and say, you know, when you read this passage, what did this make you think of or that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it's not always questions and answering questions, but, but also just talking about the structure of the book and things like that that, that can prompt some good discussion. Okay, I'm going back to my PowerPoint. Remembering these things are just pretty much cut and paste from this web page. Um, when we start a discussion, I always ask the person who picked the book to remind us, why did you pick this? What was your intention? And that can, we had, I realized I had a follow-up question from our discussion that I didn't ask. Our, pers our book club member picked the book because he'd won the Nobel Prize for right. some of his writing, not particularly for that book, but mm -hmm. she said, I wanted to know what Nobel Prize writing was like. Right. And I didn't ask, so what is Nobel Prize writing like? And after I went to bed that night, I thought that was such an yeah. obvious closer. Right. And I missed it. But right. And, you know, we get all gamut of answer to that. It might be, you know, sometimes it's like I read this book and I totally wanted somebody to talk to about it. I mean, we've all <laughs> had that experience, like see this movie, read that book because you want to. Right. You want to talk to someone about it. We've had that kind of answer. You know, other times it's been like, well, I had, you know, two days and I went to the library and looked on the new book list or I knew there were a lot of copies of the book or I'd heard buzz about it or, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons that people choose the books they do. 
but it's a great it is a great starter question yeah definitely another thing and i didn't put this on my list when i go around the room uh, i will ask when did you finish the book right and this isn't on here i forgot that but that way <laughs> there's always someone who just finished last night or perhaps that morning or two months ago and yeah. has forgotten a lot of it and... yeah and that really helps you if you're asking a question of someone you can say you just finished what was that right. character's name uh, can you remind us about what happened here? Right. Because we do all finish at different times, especially at the interval at which we meet, which is every other month. Right. So that's another good thing to do. I suppose that outs people who haven't read the book. Then. Yeah. <laughs> totally, yeah. Or they'll lie. <laughs> or they just finished it that morning before they came. Yeah. Um, I have, for this last time, I read a lot of book reviews. I mean, you can find sometimes professional book reviews mm -hmm. really easily online. Amazon will link to Publishers Weekly, Choice, Voya, lots of book review sources. And then I sometimes really enjoy the starred readers, the right. folks like you and I who are able to write in reviews. And they might say, I've read every book by this author. This one was very different. Right. And that might prompt you to say, well, other readers are saying that this book particularly stands out. Why? Mm -hmm. That could be a question that you've garnered just from those reviews. Yeah. One person's article that I read said that she didn't like to focus on those very much. Mm. I really like to. Do you do that? Oh, yeah. It's, I love professional reviews because I just, I mean, I first of all, you learn so much about them. And it, because professional reviews aren't always... I like this book. I didn't like this book. A lot of times they give background. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll, they, especially like the New York Times will choose someone that knows about, for instance, we just read the book, a book that takes place in Turkey. You know, we don't all know the history and the New York Times is going to choose someone who knows something about that right. or knows something about the author or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so you can gain all kinds of, of insight from personal reviews. Um, I'm not such a big reader of of customer reviews You're just not. because I think that I'm so I'm so used to reading professional reviews and I and I sort of have a standard for <laughs> and sometimes when I read customer reviews they can be very good but they can also be like this book sucked I didn't <laughs> like it it was boring you know and I'm just like oh yeah you know, now the Amazon not... reviews usually are a little, little yeah warm. I, I know I know uh, and sometimes you're not going to find professional reviews right. in a book right so I mentioned that as an option, and sometimes not even Amazon has reviews. That's true. But if I'm struggling with the book, sometimes just knowing what other readers went through, right. that experience of when I'm preparing, to say, right. oh, they, they struggled too, or... Yeah, I think professional reviews are, are, are great, a really, really mm -hmm. good source. So do try to find those, and I don't find those difficult to locate. But you could certainly call us at the reference desk if you wanted any help with that. In Nebraska Access, we have access to books in print, and that will sometimes lead you to reviews as well. But Amazon, Barnes & Noble are pedestrian ways to get a hold of those. Good reads. Yeah, that'll help you. That really is a nice summation of what other readers mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. will help you get your thoughts together. So um, then I try to research the author. And sometimes there's a lot out there. And sometimes you're going to find a Wikipedia measly paragraph. Mm -hmm. So you may have to do a little digging to find that. And again, there was another person who said she didn't like to share too much about the author because it would lead people. But I find that it really helps explain the author's point of view, their education, their family life. Do yeah. you? I, yeah, I think so too. Now, the unfortunate thing is that if you ask any author, um, and, you know, you, you are pointing out biographical similarities to their, say, work of fiction. They will vehemently deny, among, <laughs> almost in any case, that their work of fiction has anything to do with their personal life, no matter how obvious it is, um, which I think is just a really funny quality in, in authors sometimes that they do that. But, but I find the personal backstory fascinating. For instance, this, this author from Turkey, what we found out about him, he had trained as an architect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that just was an interesting, an interesting part. And I think that a lot of the personal, um, the personal things we learn about authors really do contribute to the discussion. I mean, it's all speculation because we don't have the author sitting there, except in a few cases where well, we do. And that might be worth discussing. Yes, but, um, but, but yeah, I think, I think it adds, it adds, it adds interest and fullness to a discussion. That might be a great segue to twice in our book group. We have had the author with us. Right, which has its own 
Mm. Um, uh, own issue. <laughs> one of our book club members is an author and has written nonfiction fiction books and then did a foray into a fiction romance. And so we plugged in an additional time to read that for Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. And so um, we were able to ask the writer, why did you do this? Right. Why did you, and the, boy, those are self-built in questions. Right. Um, why did you make the plot go this way? Right. This didn't seem in character at all with that person. Exactly. And there were many things I had trouble with in that book. Mm -hmm. The challenge was to be diplomatic. Exactly. And not be critical, but to be curious instead of critical exactly how how did you prepare yourself for that night when we discussed that? well i yeah I, I i focused a lot on the characters and the character development and just exactly what you said the questions about why things happened the way they did why he wrote it the way he did um and not the overall questions of you know quality is this the best book i ever read or whatever right. you know yeah and um and you know i mean i think it goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of this is that you have this relationship you have this sort of respect for each other and these kind of under un, unspoken rules about about how you comport yourself in that situation and so i didn't ever have any worry that it was going to be <laughs> bad or uncomfortable i worry <laughs> you worry but you worry about everything but <laughs> But um, but I mean it's such a respectful group and it's and and all of the you know, the relationships are very strong and intact in that mm -hmm. group and that makes a big difference and you know no one's going to go off the deep end. But <laughs> and on the other side we had Ladette Randolph who was a Nebraska author join us. Mm -hmm. She's a friend of a friend of mine and she, right. I knew that she was in town and and we were discussing her book um, Sand Hills Ballad, which and, was your choice, which was my choice, mm -hmm. um, and and that was really interesting too to have her there. And I think she was absolutely thrilled to think that ten people had spent that much time and energy actually thinking about what she had written, mm -hmm. and you know, and and wanting to talk to her about it. And I and you know, I think she totally enjoyed the experience, and it meant a lot to her. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that was fun. It was just a different, a different. It's a very different way of book dis doing book discussion, but it's a fun thing to do once in a while. I wouldn't want the author to be there. For no, everyone. but in those two <laughs> circumstances, very specifically, it was a very. The chemistry was quite different. Right. And in that book, I didn't really like any of the characters. Yeah. I didn't enjoy any of them. Yeah. And there she was. <laughs> She who had created them. Exactly. <laughs> say, I didn't like anybody who created them. Yeah. But you can't say that. No, no, no. I think that would be the wrong thing to say. It would be to say, I, I, I struggled with this character and the choices right. he made. Right. And not all characters have to be likable to be no. compelling. You know? Right. So I, think, I, don't, you know, I don't know if she was set out to write a book where we were supposed to champion somebody or dislike right. somebody. I mean, I think it was just sort of a book about... Mm -hmm. about the way people's lives fall apart and how they try to put them back together again. Some people would say that's a very book club kind of book. Yeah, it was. I thought there was a lot to talk about. So researching the author, number six. Number seven, we're sort of segueing to discussing characters of the book, um, asking members to comment on them. Sometimes you can just go, it, a discussion will lay itself out. You'll say, let's talk about the father. Let's talk about the mother. Right. Let's talk about the children, and you've got a half an hour right, right there just talking about those. And I'm certainly not trying to say that a, the length of a discussion denotes the success of a club. Right. That's not my point. Sometimes you've just got a lunch hour. Sometimes you guys are meeting later after work, right. and you can go on and on. Right. So please don't think in any way that the length of your discussion means success or not right. success. I shouldn't say that. You want to say anything more about characters, and that can be hard in nonfiction. Yes, yes, of course. Um, yeah, the the characters, of course, are important, and we're, we'll talk about this in a little bit about kind of what people read for. Mm -hmm. um, and some people do read for characters. This came up in our last book group, as we, as you know, people. A lot of people feel they need somebody they can be sympathetic <laughs> with, and if everyone in the book is just a horrible person, they they have a very hard time with that book and that's a person I would say that reads for character mm -hmm. and so if you have people like that in your group and you've got a book that you know there, it's going to be hard for them to see beyond that into other qualities of the book and you just have to understand that there's other people who that doesn't matter to them at all so <laughs> this is what you find out when you're in a book group, right you know? it's sort of a Myers-Briggs of book yeah, behavior exactly yeah, yeah. 
um, discussing the setting of a book, uh, the location, the time in which it takes place. For example, I had just read Shadow of the Wind, which was a one book, one Lincoln contender. And I so needed someone to talk to about that because mm -hmm. it was kind of a gothic mm -hmm. mystery. And I really needed to discuss that with someone. So when a coworker finished, I went running over there because setting and location that's out of my zone, mm -hmm. sometimes I really do need to discuss. And I love setting. Mm -hmm. I love reading for setting. Well, and I think the other thing that comes in with setting a lot of times is kind of historical impact. So if you're reading a book that took place during the Second World War, or the turn of the century, and you're you're thinking about it with current sensibilities, you're you're just not going to get it. I mean, I think right. that that's really important. And sometimes I've read historical novels where the characters have that kind of modern sensibility, and you're thinking, no, really, if you were born and raised at the turn of the century, you're not, you know, you can have these feminist ideas, but it's not going to be full blown like it is right. if you live post 1960s or you know 80s or whatever. So, so that's always something, I think that's an authenticity thing too about setting that's always interesting to discuss. Does the person really seem like they're of that time or right. of, that, of that setting? And also there's tons to learn about books that take place in other countries and other times because, you know, about, especially when we were doing some background research about the book that we just read that took place in Turkey and there were, there were a series of revolutions that happened in the 60s and right. 70s and 80s. And, so, you know, who knew about that? I mean, we were pretty sheltered from that whole story and found out more about it from reading that book, which was really one of the great things about reading. Two books that come to mind for setting and location and time, Destiny of the Republic mm -hmm. and River of Doubt, two right. terrific nonsense books. Um, am I still on eight? Yeah, eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm good. Okay, so, so I mentioned that as nonfiction books that read like fiction. Right. That are really, uh, if your book group wants to branch out, those can really yield great discussion for that area. Um, number nine, major themes of the book. Sometimes that's easier than others to pluck those out. So this is a buffet of options for you to pick from in terms of getting ready for your discussion. Some themes really are quite obvious, though. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's you want to comment more? Well, I, I think also that's another one where the reader, the reader has a huge influence on what what the themes of the book are. <laughs> I mean, you can read what the author says, of course, and you should probably trust the author. Um, but but really, people read so differently. This is actually a good a good one if you're going to start your discussion. And this is what we do when we do parent child book groups by having each person give something that they want to talk about, whether it's a theme or a character or an idea or they have a question or whatever. Um, this is a good question to mm. ask in that kind of a setting where, because we tend to like in the child, parent-child book groups to kind of go around in a circle and say, okay, everybody contribute something at the mm -hmm. beginning of the discussion and then the discussion leader will write that down. So we'll be sure to touch on all of those things in the course of the, of the book discussion. And a lot of people want to talk about the themes. Mm -hmm. We put this one down, why do you think the author wrote the book? I'm not sure I've ever really brought that up, but it might be relevant to some particular books. Rachel Carson's Silent Spring right. we read right. a couple of years ago. Yeah, that had a very clear purpose. Yeah. Fiction's a lot harder, although when you, when you hear authors speak or you read interviews with authors, um, they often talk about, uh, about you know, things coming into their lives at a certain time, um, ideas, percolating that then became something they just needed to get on the page. I and mean, there's all kinds of interesting takes on that. Mm -hmm. and, and you can yeah. often find find that information. Um, and sometimes online. not. And sometimes not. Yeah. yeah. So again, this is a buffet. Pick and choose from what, what might make your discussion work well. Vicki, you were just alluding to this. Um, the Nancy Pearl. Yeah, Nancy Pearl, the woman, the Seattle librarian who came up with the one book, one town phenomena. Mm -hmm. she, and I heard her speak about this when she was at NLA several years ago, and it really did clarify kind of the Myers-Briggs book exactly. type. And she talks about what do you read for, story, character, setting, or language? Mm -hmm. I think language is the least. It's a problem. And that's you. Yeah, that's one thing I really like. You do read for language. Some people just need the story to go, 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 and take them through right. it. And right. Some people really want to fall in love with the characters. Right. For them to become friends. And those are the series readers, the, the ones that just 
can't wait for that next <laughs> carriage book and the next character. Those are maybe series along. readers, right. which I'm really guilty of. Right. But, you know, the other thing about this, too, is that none of this is mutually exclusive. There are people that like to read for certain things but can find a lot of enjoyment in a book that, that doesn't meet the, all those criteria. Right. So that's, once again, the difference between your leisure reading, um, your private secret reading. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people <laughs> always have that, you know. And, uh, or, you know, what you, what you read when you're down or what you read when you're on vacation or what you read mm -hmm. when you, you know, I mean, there are people have different reading tastes. So just because you happen to be a reader who really likes character, it doesn't mean that you couldn't read a beautiful poetic book and get something out of it. It just means that you tend to, to do that, to gravitate towards a certain kind of book. And I think when Nancy Pearl talks about a lot of these, she's talking about reader's advisory which is trying to match the right person yes. with the right book. And in a book group, you're not necessarily trying to do that. You're trying to expose and and, right. and have a lot of different kinds of options for people. Get outside but, your comfort zone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But in the discussion, it's good to know that because if some people are just saying, you know, I could not get into this book, and, and you know, you're kind of like, yeah, you're the character reader, and you, you know, and, and I can see where that comes from. So it helps us kind of understand where the other people in the discussion are coming from. Too. There was a book we discussed called Tinkers. Yes. Uh, I can't recall the author right now. Yes. You and Dean loved it. I love that book, yes. But it was really atmospheric, right. kind of in a dream state, back and forth between characters, and you weren't always, I wasn't always certain who the narrator was. Right. Most of us struggled. Right. And you and Dean were loving it yeah. all the way down the line. So yeah. in the discussion, it helped to know well, I really do read for character. I really need to have some strong, defined characters, and right. you don't. Right. So that helped us. It doesn't make it right or wrong. It didn't make the discussion better or worse. Right. Right. So that's important to learn about your book club members. And even if you're just meeting for one time, you can say, well, what, what's important to you in a book? And this book didn't have it, or it did. Well, and the great thing about that, too, is that the other types of readers can open up new ways of seeing a book. And you might come away from the discussion with more appreciation, understanding. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you love the book suddenly. But I've actually come out of discussions in my other book group where the person said, I'm going to read that book again because I did not get all of this out of it. You know? right. And that's a, that's a really cool mm -hmm. thing when that happens, too. So right. I mean, not that everybody wants to do that. But, but yeah, you have to be open. Right. I also liken it to maybe a dinner club. If Vicki and I, every Sunday, determine to go out for a different cuisine. We're going to eat right. French. We're going to eat Thai. We're going to eat Ethiopian. Are we both going to love it? Right. No. So think of this book club like a meal right. that's quite different. The it's buffet, not, once again. It's not meat and potatoes. It's back to food. <laughs> I know. I used to always do car <laughs> analogies. So, you know, you're not all going to like it. That doesn't mean it's a bad book group. I sometimes feel when we hear comments from librarians, you know, nobody finished it, nobody liked right. it. But really, the discussion is the key. Right. So this session today is how to salvage that, how to make lemonade out of some lemons, perhaps, that you'll work well, experiencing. Well, and we maybe should have mentioned this at the beginning. I don't know if it's going to come up later, but um, so many people start a book group by saying, did you like the book? <laughs> or did you not like the book? Oh, yes. And we, re I really, really, really discourage that because that is just shut down mode at right. that point. If someone says, no, I don't like it, then, you know, it, and, and liking it or not liking the book is almost immaterial in my opinion. It's of no consequence. Um, so if, if you're going to start your book group like that, you're going to have a problem. And I just want to convey something that I learned from being on a mock Caldecott committee um, when they're discussing those books, they they absolutely forbid people to make negative comments immediately. Those have to be saved for the end. Mm -hmm. So only positive things can be said about the book until everybody has gotten their positives out, and then the negatives can be raised. And I and we kind of went by that in my other book group also. Yes. And, and it was really good because negative comments really shut down discussion. Another person sitting there saying. Ooh, I feel kind of awkward now saying that I thought that was a good book when everybody's trashing it. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that the, the, the mix of negative and positive, it's not like you can't say it, but you don't want to start your book group on a negative tone. And right. you don't really want to bring the whole issue of like, dislike, 
um, up at the very beginning. I mean, maybe, maybe at the end you can kind of people can be kind of candid right. and talk about it. But if you start your book discussion that way, it's not going to go very far. That came from, and I forgot to mention this in the second point. When you're coming up with your questions, don't make them yes or no questions. Right. Make them open ended and don't right. ask who likes a book. Exactly. Yeah. That's pretty traditional in a lot of articles that I've read yeah. to not do that. And I, I know book groups that do. Right. So I, if that works for you, great. Um, Vicki and I are looking for long discussion. So right. if that's not your book group's goal, then okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, we mentioned uh, point number 12, when did you finish the book? Maybe it was two months ago. Sometimes handouts might help. I never do that. But for some books, maybe a list of characters or a setting or... Um, for us, the setting of Turkey, we talked a little bit about the three revolutions that took place in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. We needed to remind ourselves mm -hmm. of that and how it fit in with the setting of what we mm -hmm. read. Um, that may be helpful. It may be a lot of work, and you may think, I don't want to do that. But it could be if the characters' names are odd or hard to pronounce. Or I think most of us have a little sheet where we wrote down the characters' names because they weren't names that were familiar to right. us. And so... You know, remembering now what was that character's name, and mm -hmm. and so we did that. Another thing that's helpful sometimes are maps. Yes. Um, for instance, I kind of know what Turkey is shaped like, and I kind of knew where that that city was, but it would have been interesting to you know just kind of see that. Um, any kind of background history about the area, um, photographs. I mean, anything that you can find to to add to the discussion, I think, could be a really good mm -hmm. thing. When we read a book about the share crop, um, Mary Coyne, mm. which was based on the photo, the iconic photo taken of right. an immigrant worker, I passed that around again right. and some other photos of that time. I don't know that that helped, but it helped me remember what, who we were talking about. Yeah, I think that's helpful. Uh, sometimes your book may have a movie component. We, it's important to let you know that we do have some DVDs in our book club kit so some of them come with a movie and once in my book club we did a book movie combo and it was fun so we read the book came together discussed it and watched the movie and there's always compare contrast most of us would say the book is better sometimes the movie really does mm -hmm. i think in fried green tomatoes both excellent. right excellent right um so th that can be great if you want to shake things up maybe in the summertime or sometime when it's a little lighter, do something like that. So that actually works really well with teens. If you have a teen book group, um, the whole movie movie book thing is great. I always say always read the book first and have the movie <laughs> later. Um, just because it actually makes better discussion. Because when you are creating the pictures in your head of the book and then Especially if you really love the book and then you see the movie, then it's easier to contrast it than if you see the movie and get all the visual input that it was mm -hmm. already created by the director and then try to decompose that <laughs> back into the book. And um, But teenagers love that because movies are such a natural medium that they are very familiar mm -hmm. with. And if you have kids who really like to read, too, they can feel so strongly about that book and the characters that when the movie is made, they can have a lot of, a lot of things to talk about. Yeah. Um, this is easy for me. Number 14, always let others answer the questions first. So you're moderating, you're tossing out these questions. You may, I oftentimes have an answer burning in me. Please, please be quiet <laughs> when you're the leader. That's my counsel. No how hard it burns. Yeah, um, let others answer. <laughs> you don't want to come off as though you're leading it in a certain way. And oftentimes their answers take you off in another direction. Exactly. And that's fine. I yeah. love that. I love it when it goes in its own direction and it leads itself. Right. It doesn't always do that, but it can. Right. Do you, is that how important is that with kids? Well, it's important. It's important with kids very much because especially if there's other adults in the group that they will take their lead from the adults. And so if the adults are saying something, they'll tend to nod their head and agree and then feel like they don't have anything to say. So mm -hmm. we tend to tell the adults to be quiet and let the kids talk first. Um, and that, that tends to work really well. And this gets to another, um, another point, and I'm not sure if we have this on our PowerPoint, about discussing, discussing from comments that people made instead of just waiting. Oh, that's our next point. Yeah. Um, Oops, how do I go back? Thank you. <laughs> number 15, yeah. Yeah, number 15, which is our next point. Um, this is something that, that I think is hard for people to do, and this is partly because of how conversations take place a lot of times. 
instead of listening for what somebody's saying and responding to what they just said, people are waiting for their turn to say what they want to say. <laughs> and in a book group, especially, um, it, you really need to focus on that because the person that is speaking, um, no matter what kind of comment or observation they're making about the book, um, if you can speak back to that, then that really is good for discussion because otherwise it's people just saying one thing after another and not really responding to each other's comments right. and, and feelings. And so, um, so it's, it's, a, it's a training thing too. And it's also something that you can practice in a book group that you maybe don't practice in your normal life. I mean, every, we should all practice this in our normal life, obviously. Yeah. But, um, but it does make for a better discussion. I think if you, if you listen to what other people have to say, and then you ask for further clarification, mm -hmm. you comment on the comment, instead of just moving on to what it is right. that you want to say. Sometimes in a book group, you'll see someone just antsy to answer, and then you've moved past it, and you'll say, it yeah. looked like you had something you really wanted to say, and we're past it. And that's the, that's the key of a good it. moderator, is that somebody who picks up on that kind of body language and that kind of, um, you know, looking at people in the group and seeing they're waiting their turn. And, you know, this, this, this is a big difference between... Um, between introverted people and extroverted people. <laughs> and you will have a mix in your group. And mm -hmm. the introverted people will tend to be polite and wait and you know anticipate, is there going to be a period at the end of the sentence and then will it be my turn to talk? <laughs> extroverted people don't tend to do that so much. And so, um, and this, this, is, this really comes into play with parent-child book groups and, we, and moderators and we teach them to look at the body language, like you said, there's the squirming, there's the, the, you know, <laughs> yeah, and and that some people do give up really easily, and so if you if you notice that, you definitely want to give them a chance to mm -hmm. to jump in. Yeah. You mentioned number sixteen, going around the room and asking every book club member what they may want to talk mm -hmm. about, a character or a theme, mm -hmm. and that puts the onus on them and right. not on you, right. that can be a great way to generate some discussions, especially if you're feeling pretty weak about right. leading the discussion. Well, and one of the reasons we do that, too, is because we want to talk about the things the group wants to talk about, not the things we want to talk right. about. Right. And so when we started to train our leaders to do this, we found that we were having better discussions because we had our you know slate of questions that we wanted to ask about the book, and then it turned out that the people in the group had different ideas mm -hmm. and and things that they wanted to right talk about so it kind of custom customizes the book discussion You're right and it's like any interviewer on a talk show you can tell if they're just reading their questions off. right that doesn't that shouldn't be your mode you right. should be prepared to trash your questions if it's really going mm -hmm. and go let on. it go exactly but if you're I think your questions are there kind of as a backup right and you should have both right but yeah it is very helpful mm -hmm. The title of the book can really be a riveting in terms of why did they name it that? What were they thinking? You know, a lot of thought goes into that, certainly with the editor and the publisher and all mm -hmm. of that discussion. What did it mean? What were they talking about? I love that. I love to talk about that because, and, and you know, sometimes when you'll read interviews with authors, they'll say, I really wanted it to be called this. And my editor said, no, it's going to be called this. <laughs> and it could be because there was another book with a similar title or they mm -hmm. thought it was misleading. And, you know, just like the book cover issue, the, it's it's often out of the author's control mm -hmm. what the book is called. And, um, and but, you know, that, that contributes hugely to the appeal of the book, too. Right. And whether or not somebody picks it up or, you know, reads it or doesn't read it. There's a, I'm not going to be able to remember the title of it now because it's such a strange title, but it's like super sad, true, there's a super sad, true love story. Um, and... I mean, I read that book seriously because of the title. I didn't read a review of it. It just grabbed me, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it a lot. But um, but so a, a title and a cover are, are really big in selling books, and so I think that it's just an it's just an interesting interesting thing. In the whole Harry Potter phenomenon, remember they were different covers for the U.S., different right. titles for the U.S., different right. covers for the U.K. Exactly. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, right. different artists, different narrators. Right. At some point I thought, why? Yeah. What, what, how are we so very different? Yeah. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. That was worth a lot of discussion at one point. Yeah, definitely. Um, as we're getting ready to wrap up here, wrapping up 
your conversation in a book group, again, I would never say, so who liked the book? Are, did you enjoy it? Did you have a good time? I always say, um, would you recommend this book to any of your friends? Who? Who would you recommend and it why? to? Why? Mm -hmm. Or also, was the ending satisfying to you? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't, how would you rewrite it? In Bel Canto, that was a really strange ending. And we spent mm -hmm. a whole maybe half an hour rewriting the ending. Right. All of us. <laughs> how would I have done it? Um, I think that can be really great. A great question. It can take you a lot of places. Um, let's see. Yeah, you're going to struggle as the leader. I think you are in the most dubious position. If you decide to be a book club leader, you're doing the heavy lifting. Right. You're going to do a lot of the work. You're also in control. For me, <laughs> that's right. really important. <laughs> right, yeah. You're going to make it go, and you could make it flop. Right. But we've had to discuss some really books books that were just awful right <laughs> in my yeah. opinion that i would have never read that i right. didn't enjoy in the slightest and but aren't there always isn't there always one person that likes it one the person who picked it <laughs> i should hope but i but Not always though but when we all come together and then have i think this may be the wrong word but it's a communion then right it's not with food but it's with the discussion right that we all bring then what we experience from the book Again, it's not success to say, oh, we all walked away and it was right. two thumbs up for us all. That's not what it's right. about. Well, and there's the nature of just being a good sport, too. I mean, there's <laughs> a huge a huge part of book group is that very thing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if, if you all have this understanding going in, it goes so much smoother that the expectation is not that everyone's going to like every book and it's all going to be happy. And, um, you know, so... So I think that those, I think having having the correct expectations makes for a good right. group. And if the discussion leader is reasonably prepared <laughs> and thoughtful, which you always are, um, even if we're discussing a bad book, quote unquote, that nobody really likes right. or people didn't take to, it, it still comes out and is interesting. Right. Right. I think that is the goal. So yes, I've read books in my book club that I, waste of time. Right. For me. Yeah. But it was about the discussion. And so I think that's what makes this session worthwhile. You said I'm going to belong to a book right. group. I'm going to commit. I'm going to read. I'm going to finish. Mm -hmm. Let's make, let's put the cherry on top of what right. was not a great, <laughs> exactly, great ice cream sundae. Another food analogy. Yes. And make it good and finish it up and say, well, that wasn't so bad. Right. And, and you know, I guess I, I disagree with you a little bit when, when you say, you know, reading a book, some books were a waste of time because I think... <laughs> Well, I just think that it's important to know sort of the breadth and depth yeah. of, of literature, um, especially as librarians, because we can read our corner of the universe, which is what we like to read, but it's right. really important for us to always know that there are other kinds of books and other kinds of readers and other kinds of right. writers that are completely different experiences, whether it's our experience or not, mm -hmm. it isn't, isn't um, relevant, because I never feel like I wasted time reading a book you didn't come that night though I, i'm thinking i'm thinking you maybe just were that i might have i might have, yeah, I might have felt differently after that. clearly we have lots of opinions about this yes. vicky and i have been at this for a while we really are not right or wrong it's these are tips and tricks that are going to that are linked from our web page um, on the book club kit page if you want to continue talking to one of us or something we said uh, challenge you please contact one of us there's our emails and our telephone numbers and say I'm, I'm struggling with this book group how could i what do you suggest or i want to start one what do you think so we hope you really have great discussions even though you have to read books you don't like <laughs> or that are not going to be your number one love yeah um, and you and use the internet widely I, I was talking with a woman yesterday who's starting a parent child book group at a school and um, she had a list of books she wanted to read, and she was concerned that there weren't, that she didn't know how to start a discussion. And I said, oh, you know, just Google the name of the book and, you know, and teacher, teacher resources or something. And someone somewhere has come with those things, you know. I should also mention in our book discussion, um, book club kit whip page, just a minute. We often will provide those for you. 
So for example, you're reading a Barbara King solver, discussion questions, yeah, discussion questions, discussion questions. So you're going to start out with some already. And the reason also this session came up was there are times when there are books that your group will choose that don't have these handy discussion questions. Right. So if you choose something here, I always do try to find them. If they're not there, believe me, I couldn't find them. Right. So, um, and this, books, books, some books these days, like children and adult books, come with discussion questions in the back. Right. Too. I just so. added a book where I put that in there. I'm not going to be able to remember the name of it now, mm -hmm. but um, I'll note that in the book. Right. Uh, in the citation. So and we're just to put a little plug in for Lincoln City Libraries on our book guide. We have um, a list of book groups in Lincoln that meet regularly, ones that we know about. But we also have all kinds of resources in there for book groups um, to use, you know, to help their discussions. Mm -hmm. We have a newsletter that's actually called Book Club Choices that you can subscribe to that will come into your mailbox once a month and say here's some good books that are good for book groups. So if I'm a librarian not in Lincoln I could subscribe to yes. that. Okay. Um, oh, one more thing here that we talked about. I also include links for authors too when I have author information. So one of those things, oh now it's not working. Uh, you, will have, you will have a link to authors. We will also have a link if you need different formats. So this link will take you to information about Barbara King Solver. So a lot of your homework's been done. Right. Um, how nice. <laughs> nice when someone does your homework. Time saver for you. So for you. there's another advantage of using our book club kits. Right. Uh, we're at 11 o'clock, so yeah. we will say goodbye. But please continue to uh, communicate with us. If you would like to do so, we would be pleased to hear from you. Um, and, and don't be discouraged if people walk away from your book group and say, oh my gosh, please don't choose another book like that. It mm -hmm. meant that they challenged them and you had a great discussion and you didn't fail. I think that's really what I want to overwhelmingly say to librarians who I've heard from really recently. It wasn't a failure. Right. It wasn't a meal you particularly enjoyed, but you had it together and you survived. And now you move on to the next. Exactly. And there, hopefully the next one will be different. Yeah. So surely it will be. <laughs> Keep up the good work with your book clubs and be in touch with us. And thank you. Cool. All right. Great. Does anybody have any questions? Nobody really had anything throughout the show, which is fine. Um, but uh, went through a lot of a lot of questions that you put up there, yes. and um, I have the slides. So those will be posted when the um, recording is put up. Also links to our your book club kit pages and your book the book guide from Lincoln City Libraries. I just added that to the thank list you. too. Oh, thank you. So um, all those links will be available for anyone who um, wants to uh, check in with them afterwards for the recording. All right. All right. Yes, that will wrap us up for this morning's Encompass Live. Thank you very much, Lisa and Vicki. That was great. Um, I know we've done, you said before, we've done other things about book club kits, but uh, not something like this about, you know, what do you do if you have nothing, you know, right. lots of good ideas, lots of things about our book club, so. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, yes, we are good to go for today. Um, the show has been recorded, so it will be available uh, later this afternoon. I'll probably get it up and ready to Great. go. Um, and that link will be provided off the book club kit page as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're yep, not, if you're not remembering how to find it, just hang around in the book club neighborhood of our website. Mm -hmm. You'll find it. You'll be able to get it from there, yeah. Yep. All right, so that will wrap it up for this morning. Um, I hope you join us actually in two weeks. Next week is the one week of the year um, that Encompass Live goes um, doesn't have a show. Uh, we um, Next week is the Nebraska Library Association, Nebraska School Library Association annual conference. And we take off that week because we figure everyone's off to a conference or doing other things, and we're busy as well. <laughs> um, so and next week there is no Encompass Live, but after that we are back on schedule. Um, Michael Sowers will be coming. He usually does the last weekend of week of the month, but he's bumped up to October 15th for his monthly Tech Talk. And then we have teen theater groups and discussion about our One Book, One Nebraska for this year, um, Once Upon a Town. So um, join us for those. And if you are on Facebook, and Compass Live does have a Facebook page. Yeah, if I can click on it, there we go. Um, so like us there and get announcements of when new shows are coming up, when um, recordings are available. I also put the reminder here from this morning where you can log in on the fly. If you didn't pre-register for a show, you can get a quick link right there to it. So um, if you're big on Facebook, um, we're there too. So please do like us there. Other than that, we are we're good, good to, go. to go. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.